Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unlocking the Cage. Um, we have your host here. I am Meg. This is Chris. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, we have had a crazy, I don't know, we've had a crazy morning. The, uh, this is a little peek behind the scenes, but this is a pre recorded episode because we're traveling. Uh, it is Saturday, November, sorry, November 7th, and uh, we have been out driving our car around and hogging and it's been awesome so uh we are excited to get back and talk about nicholas cage movies though um so uh, the purpose of this podcast is to rank and watch every single one of nicholas cage's 105 movies i know i said 104 in the past but we have another movie that wasn't on our list which i'll talk about later um we are going to spoil the movie today's movie is vampire's kiss there's not that much to spoil about this movie um <laughs> and uh yeah, so our podcast is live recorded every Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific and then released on Tuesday. So, Chris, let's bring out our guest. We have comedian David Thomas today. Hello, Dave. Hello, David. Hello. A historical day. The first time I've seen this movie. <laughs> you watched this movie literally today, is what you said. Literally right? today. I I wanted it to be fresh in my mind, but I think I, I had to forget math to remember this movie. So <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous. Had to clear so out some space in the old uh, in the old hard drive. Yeah, yeah, God, thank God this is in there now. You know, <laughs> thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. This is this has been one that's been on our list for a while, and I don't know. I think I think it'll be a fun one. And so, I, am I understanding is right that none of the three of us have seen this movie before? I have not. It's the first time I've seen it too. Okay, cool. So I think this might be the first movie we've done where it's brand new to everyone involved. Although I don't know if that matters much, but um, it's definitely the so, first movie that I've seen that's like really just just to the core just shook me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've all seen like you know like the face right. like, that's been the most famous thing and uh, it, when that scene happened i was like oh there it is it's, the face. <laughs> it's like a meme like but without it's been an unedited meme the whole thing is just like one yeah <laughs> uh. um so checking in on our, our nicholas cage journey um i think our cur current counts for me and chris are i'm up to 16 movies chris is up to 29 movies and dave david if you had to guess how many movies you'd seen of nicholas cage's what would you say you said you said there's 105? There's 105. I'm going to say between three and 105 <laughs> is my guess. No, seriously, I, I don't know. Like, probably less than eight. I, I, I think probably like six, seven, something like that. I think that, I that's bet you, I, yeah, You've probably seen, you've seen Gone in 60 Seconds, The Rock, uh, uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Like, you've seen those? Con Air, Face the, Off. The Rock, yes. Con Air, Face Off. Not leaving Las Vegas. I've never seen any of the movies where Nicolas Cage is supposed to be well regarded. <laughs> <laughs> like adaptation, haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, it's it's a whole. I, I'm known as I, I. There's so much shit I haven't seen. I didn't see ET until like two weeks ago. So like I don't I don't like seek out the stuff where they're like you haven't. You know. <laughs> That's totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. So like, all right. So we. So you have no knowledge of pop culture whatsoever. No, what, so, I, I don't even know what a podcast is. <laughs> uh, what we're doing. I thought we were going to get tea, but uh, so you but bring a, a outsider's perspective to this is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I like it. I mean, I think it's good. I think it's good that our our show we are getting a lot of people who have different relationships with Nicolas Cage. I think that's I think that's important for context. No right. actual relationships with Nicolas Cage, to be clear. But Wait, okay, just want to clarify, if you're listening to this podcast and you have an actual relationship with Nicolas Cage, please email us at managerscomedy.gmail.com. Yes, would like please. To talk to you. please. All right, so this movie, Vampire's Kiss, mm -hmm. it is from 1988, so a pretty early on. I would say, you know, peak, um, I know this changes throughout the movie, but one of the themes that Chris and I want to do eventually is peak hot cage. Like, like he's like, no, all right, so he, he's, conventionally attractive at the beginning of this movie i no? guess okay i know this is a controversial statement i don't think so he <laughs> he, he his hair his hair looks like a bike helmet like, yeah. his, <laughs> I, the hair is bad Absolutely. and like the cl the classic like really you tell how how rail thin he is in just these big giant suits 
But like for, for the time, I imagine like was he considered like in like the late eighties, early nineties? Was he like a a hot guy? I guess we'll have to find out because we're we're gonna be watching Moonstruck and uh, Raising Arizona soon. So because those are like all of the same era. I think that when you say hot cage, right? Like you young cage does not equate to hot cage. But here's why I think you think he's the hottest cage at this point. I think you think he looks like David Byrne because the big the big suit with all the extra space in it. <laughs> and you, love I love David, David Byrne. Byrne. I would you know not say David heads. Byrne is a crush of mine, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But maybe there's some sort of subconscious thing going on. He's got that um, big ass suit. Like, what was with that big ass suit? I mean, I will say a lot of the movies we've seen so far have not been very conventionally attractive cages, like Face Off, for example. Um, no. So this movie is really interesting in the history of Cage because it is pretty much like his first like real off the wall crazy movie. You know, mm. like this is. Was this before? He, or no, this was before uh, uh, Wild at Heart. I believe so. Yeah, Wild at Heart was 1990. Ah, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, this movie was directed by a man named Robert Bierman, who has done nothing else that I have heard of. Um, <laughs> and the reason for that is because this movie bombs like really bad reviews. Nobody got it. It uh, didn't make a lot of money. It was like a really low budget horror movie. Um, and basically, like a lot of people who worked on this just that gave up on filmmaking like there's um oh, yeah the the producer was like this was awful uh she decided that she didn't want to be a film producer anymore and now she's a literary agent uh the director uh robert Wait, Bierman. rewind yeah. she yes. became the job that nick cage has she in the did. movie i was gonna say that that's a good point <laughs> hold on I'm finding my calling right now. <laughs> yeah, so was it because it was a bad movie or was it because she like saw Nick Cage and she's like, I want to be able to yell at people like that? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. She she just said she didn't want to be a film producer anymore uh, because nobody liked the movie she made. Um, of course not. Yeah. yeah. The dude, the director switched over to TV work in England, which is why I think we haven't heard of his stuff, um, where the movie was actually better received. So it was just a major bomb, but then it became this like crazy cult classic and like this meme generating thing. Like there's so many clips from this that I think uh, you as the listener and viewer will recognize even if you haven't seen the movie. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it took on a life of its own. It seems like one of those, like, I can imagine a week into, into shooting, like everybody on set's just like, God, like I went to NYU. <laughs> like, what, what the fuck am i it has my life has led to this point and it i'm shocked that nicholas cage in a right direct everything and it, it's like he did everything to be completely honest i wonder if the writer at some point was like hey you know this is my first movie uh i don't know what the fuck i'm doing just, just do what you want with this and then she, he just he just ran with it and i don't know i i, I really you think yeah, go ahead. Sorry, David, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I really, half the movie looks like they, it's Nicolas Cage warming up to do the scene as opposed to doing the scene. I, I really think that he, I like to imagine he was so method and they're like, just turn on the camera now. And they just got him rambling and like running around doing, doing stuff. Like, this is I, absolutely peak method. He, there's a lot of stuff. He, he was peak method during this. Like he was very method and I think probably drove everybody crazy. Um, a what? comment about the writer. Uh, one other thing that was interesting is nothing in this movie was improvised. Every word, every action was exactly as written. Um, one thing was changed from the script. Exactly one big thing was changed from the script. Do you, do you guys know what it is? All right, let's guess. <laughs> I am going to say that when he bites the lady's neck, he was supposed to do it with the plastic teeth, but he, he took him out. See, maybe the plastic teeth too, but I think originally he was gonna think he had teeth and then like didn't buy the plastic teeth, but I bet they change it to where they straight up like he had to they had to show him buy it. I think that's what they added in. It's it's actually the cockroach scene. Oh so, god. Originally oh. he was supposed to suck on a raw egg. <laughs> and then Nicolas Cage was like the thing that I hate most in this world are cockroaches. So let me eat a cockroach. And he wanted to eat the scariest thing he could think of. 
and not to get too gross, but he did eat the cockroach. It took him three takes. It was very unpleasant for him. <laughs> wow. I mean, props, props, honestly. Yeah, like that's an actor's actor. <laughs> give, him, give, him, give him the posthumous Oscar. No, no, he's not dead. Give him the late Oscar now. Like, just give do it. <laughs> posthumous Oscar. I think we should give him the posthumous Oscar. Just, just do it. <laughs> he's going to be like, what? <laughs> that would be um, so let's let's quickly overview what this movie is about. Um, David, yeah. do you want to give us just a brief little blurb? What is this this movie about? God, it's if I had to like sum it up, like a guy who sounds like a half asleep British prince. <laughs> Sorry. Like he he works at the vaguest job ever, and he slowly is going nuts. Thinks he has. Thinks, has sex with a woman, sees a bat, thinks he's a vampire for an hour and a half, and ends up. Yeah, no, that's it. I yeah. it, there really is not much plot here. That's what I usually I write out the beats of the movie so I get when we talk through it. There's literally just three beats I have, which is bat interrupts sex, he makes up vampire lady, he kills someone. I mean, that's and it. he and he, you know, sexually assaults. Oh yeah, yeah. Then there's this whole <laughs> subplot with the, this poor secretary. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So let's let's start from the beginning. Uh, and I don't like I don't even know. I, oh, 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 let's touch on like, the voice the thing that you mentioned is interesting. He has a really weird voice uh, throughout this movie, which we'll see in the clips, um, which Chris and I have dubbed from other movies fancy cage in disguise voice um because this is the same voice that he uses in a couple other movies where he's playing um a, he's, he's playing a character who's playing another character which is like like he's trying to be uh, a fancy guy trying to 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 get information so he'll go undercover at like a fancy auction or like a fancy car store <laughs> and he's like i want the best cars available to me and he does this exact character so I don't know, well. David, if you've seen Gone in 60 Seconds or National Treasure. Those are two uh, examples of that. He, he calls upon this character to be the fancier version of Cage. And he always has the same slick back hair. Um, what? I can't. I, I, it's like Face Off really dug into him and he has to go to different parts of himself to find these. And this was even before that. I, I, yeah, I don't. He, his accent, he sounds like. He sounds like if you did, did like a two hour improv show and somebody at the beginning's like, you're British. And then by the <laughs> end, you're like, God, like I'm still doing this fucking accent. <laughs> he, uh, so uh, this is the, the background to the accent is he's, it's supposed to be fake accent used by the character. So it's his character's fake voice because he thinks it makes him sound more uh, elegant and smarter. Uh, and the accent right. comes and goes and is more prominent when he's trying to impress people and less prominent in scenes with the psychiatrist where he's more being himself oh uh, all right so it was intentional that the fake accent i guess okay but it right. was not translated at all. <laughs> so what do you guys think of the psychiatrist like i mean do you think that she was real uh great at question. any point because you know he's he's visiting her a lot but uh like do you think she actually existed ever yeah, that's a good question in general is what is real in this movie, right? Like, yeah. I think we know that I think we know that the hookup with the girl at the beginning and then the bat, that seems to be real, right? Yes. Uh, the you bat, don't think so, Chris? The bat, I guess, was real. The other woman was real. Like, we got to find the line. Where was the line when... You know he's he starts losing it. Maybe all right. So the sexual arousal to the bat. He sees the therapist before he he's talking about that that girl to the therapist in the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. So right. does he just see this therapist in his mind like he's seeing the vampire lady in his mind? I think the therapist is real. That's my my uh, opinion on it because I think yeah. the, the stuff at the end where he visits her and it's clearly fake. Um. I think other than that, she's a real person and they have real therapy sure. and he's just losing his mind. 
Yeah, because she, yeah, a very clear shift. She she is not phased at all, really, by his behavior. Like he he is clearly unhinged the whole movie. And like he calls her and like random with this insanely attractive man that she clearly just had sex with and like answers the phone he's like yeah and then she's like okay sure 7 30 monday hangs up i'm like she's not yeah. she's with well, this. i guess let's like all right let's just do not get so like into like all right sorry yeah. I, no, 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 no 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 i i started hard, this is a hard one because it doesn't yeah. have a good thread to follow but at the beginning of this movie i kind of liked the vibe of the movie a little bit because it was like a weird kind of like and you said this meg it was like a like a different kind of portrayal of New York city that I'm used to. Cause it's like an eighties portrayal of, and they're going to these fancy bars and stuff. And it kind of had almost a fun vibe when they're, they're like junk and stumbling around and they have sex and the bat comes in. It's like kind of goofy. Uh, and it, it like right. kind of like at some point just, just like starts to turn real crazy. I guess it's when he starts getting angry at, um, at Maria Conchita Alonso. I yeah. So he's got this secretary um, who, and he's obsessed with, this contract that he wants her to find, but she can't find it. This is a huge plot point in this movie. A huge plot point. Like a, con- a single contract. This is like one of those movies, I think, where the writer has a weird sense of humor and like these are jokes to them or yeah. something. Yeah, it, it really seemed, I so much of this movie, I got echoes of like, the room with Tommy Wiseau and like the way, the way he talked about the bank, like, Oh yeah, we agreement at the bank, make money. And Nicholas Cage, just like this contract, this contract for what? And like, didn't, didn't he talk to the guy on the phone and he was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. Do what you want, but he's still obsessed with it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it's so, yeah. I thought for a keep, moment, for, oh, sorry. I was gonna say not to keep bringing improv into this, but it reminds me of like when you do an improv scene and you get fixated on something really, really low stakes and everyone's got to be like, make it huge stakes, even though like, like make this stupid thing about this contract huge stakes in order to make it interesting. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a great like the the obvious unhinged un, unhinged stuff starts with him harassing. What was it? Alva? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like he. It's like he's at home, and it's just like sure, like he drinks, like I, I, I still like an American Psycho thing. Like he's weird, and he only like he has one night stands, and he drinks a lot. But like, it, you, you kind of got the impression that like he wasn't always a fucking tyrant at work, you know? Oh, yeah. Now, oh, here's a question: Was it the moment the vampire bit him that things go crazy? But the vampire never bit him, so that's that's I well, think what happened in the movie. I mean, like yeah. with that first time that vampire comes to his house in the night and bites him. It's I think like after no. that point. Well, no, doesn't he? Does he hooks up with the girl at the start, and then it's the next night, and it's a different girl, and then yeah. that's supposed to be the vampire, right? Right. I I think at that moment, I I would say that's the moment when like. The next day is when he starts like getting a little crazy because he has the band. When the band aid shows up on his neck, is like when he's like, yeah. ah, and he's doing all the crazy stuff in the office. Right. <laughs> oh my god! There, and then I, he's I, handing I, the cup of coffee to nobody. Remember out in the morning, like his hand is just shaking, and he's like, "Have some coffee." And he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> oh, like he's in the shower, and no, that that's later too. I. Th- Everything just blends together. Like it really he, does. There, there's a do you, Chris. Do you have a sense of the clips we have? Of there any near the beginning? I just like I didn't even write good uh, notes. Let me let me see. I, we have a lot of clips of this movie. Let's hop onto the media tab. Uh, yeah. So we have. Uh, I think the earliest clip we have is the ABCs. No, they're, they're all they're all pretty. Yeah, the ABCs is the earliest yeah. clip we have. So. Um, so let's let's wait till so basically yeah so what's happened so far is the bat has interrupted their sex he gets obsessed with the idea of vampires right. and he because he was sexually aroused by the bat <laughs> he tells his therapist that <laughs> he was, I was I was drunk and quite horny yeah oh yeah we and also get that clip. When, when the bat when the there's another uh, when the bat comes in he uh, she, like. The girl runs out and she's naked in the hallway. And then he turns back as he's running out, looks at the bat, and he's like, he's like, oh, hello. He, he like he he was so 
he wasn't aroused at the woman with the bat. It's like he was making fuck me eyes at the bat. <laughs> I, I, it, uh. And then, and then, so then he hooks up with this other girl, Jennifer Beals. And I think, I think he really does hook up with her, but I think he makes up or he either sees her and then decide and makes up the story of her hooking up with her or he hooks up with her and just, and makes up the biting the neck thing. It's clear later on that they've met, but not whether they actually did hook up. I, that, I, actually, that, <laughs> I wanted to get this clip. Uh, so forgive me guys. Uh, let's see if it'll actually let me do it just because uh, I think it's, like a really funny one, Very strong impression. Um, but I don't know yes, if it's gonna okay. let me do it. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, so uh, let me just give me a I second to, uh, was... to to figure yeah. this one out. But this one I think is worse. Hair. This one hair is strong and bad and gets oh, yes. significantly okay. worse. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna. You talk amongst yourselves. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Do one thing here. Yeah, this is all over the place. I have a oh, fact yeah. about. I have a fact about the bat. Now that we're talking okay. about the bat. Um, so, uh, Nicholas Cage was obsessed with the idea that it's a real bat. He wanted it to be a real bat so badly. And they kept vetoing it because they were like, you can't, you, you, bats can have rabies. You can't control them. Right. And, uh, and, um, they, what's it called? Oh, he had a PA that was assigned to him and Nicholas Cage sent this PA named Osmond to the park with an ice cooler and a broom to try and capture a bat. And then uh, Osmond found out that Nicholas told him that you could get bats from Mexico. Um, and then the the, direct, the producer was like, no, we're not going to FedEx some bat from Mexico. It, it, what it, the fuck? It was apparently a huge <laughs> argument. Uh, and the, and the, uh, the only way that the director won the argument was to persuade Cage that if he got bitten by a bat, he would probably die and the film would be ruined. Oh, my God. And the film would be ruined. <laughs> ruined. And the All film right. would be ruined, right? <laughs> this is, so it, this is is... A, it is a robotic bat. That's a ro- robot. Wow, really? Are you serious? <laughs> yes. That wasn't real? Hey, you know what's amazing is there was no strings. That thing flew. <laughs> they were geniuses it was iron man technology shoo, shoo. <laughs> oh god there's so many like quotable moments in this movie all right this is the yeah. one this is one that we didn't get a clip of before but i wanted okay. to get this clip Hit it. where he's like yeah this very is strong impression oh yes okay i know uh i guess i was pretty horny pretty uh keyed up from being with the girl right before i was drunk too that was it. I'd had a little to drink. I was a little drunk. Plus, I was horny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I had so many conversations in my life that went that way. And- right. <laughs> He's trying to remember his lines. <laughs> I'm tr- you know, what, his, his affectation, straight on Donald Trump impression. Just like straight on. Not, it not does all of it. Have that. Yeah, it does have that vibe though. Oh, wow. Maybe yeah, that was I, maybe that's what this came from. Donald Trump was a rich guy in the eighties in New York. Maybe that's where this comes from. Um the all right, so we get so he he starts to go nuts. And then we have any number of clips that we could play at this point. He's harassing mm-hmm. his his poor secretary. Yeah. He's doing Are do you want to do bust uh, out the ABCs? Yeah, do the ABC slamming. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is a, a moment from the movie that's pretty famous. S file something. He's obsessed what about the files. What could be easier? It's all alphabetical. You just put it in the right file according to alphabetical order. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Huh? That's all you have to do! Very good. You know your alphabet. I never misspelled anything! <laughs> not once, not one time! I'm sure that you didn't. Oh. I want to know, really. Who did? I cannot possibly tell you that. You can't? No, I can't. Ha! Slow zoom. You call yourself a psychiatrist. <laughs> like, like what? 
<laughs> What's the connection there? I love, I love how he, he he's like a child. Not one time. Not, I I've never have. The that it's like it, it, the slow zoom is like, and you call yourself a psychiatrist. It's like, what? Also, <laughs> she's not a psychiatrist. I don't think. I think she's a psychologist. He's not on any medication. But you could still okay. You don't do talk therapy with a psychiatrist. Psychiatrists give you medicine. I like how after that clip, that's the part you're harping on. <laughs> I was gonna say, and then that is the craziest part of this movie. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I was okay. I was on board up until that moment. Those <laughs> words came out of his mouth. It would have been great if her oh. comeback was like, "I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm a psychologist, motherfucker." And you're like, I'm back in. <laughs> So I feel like we have a couple clips we could show. Oh, we Why don't tons. we do the the one where he destroys his apartment? So oh, now yeah. he's you all know right. so really this, lost it. He's he's he. Th- all right, let's wait. Let's back up a second. I want to talk about one thing. All right, so this woman Please. shows up. <laughs> this woman shows up, and I think part of the reason, and you said this when we watched this, Meg. Part of the reason is this movie's so hard to talk about linearly is they reuse a shot of the woman, and uh, so like he the first night they're together. You know, she has, Meg points out, this obvious pasty on her boob. Like, like these big, giant, just like you can clearly see their, like, stick-on pasties on her boobs. And he's, like, she's, like, biting his neck. And then, like, later on in the movie, they just reuse the same shot of, the, you know, mm. her just biting his neck. And then, um, but, like, so she comes into the picture. And I, I was overthinking this movie originally because I was, like, oh, this, this movie is about BDSM. Because, like, so... <laughs> This this woman comes in and she's like the mistress and like beating him up and like all this stuff and like taking control. But in the workplace, he's the one who wants to like, you know, subjugate this other woman or whatever. And I'm like, there must be some theme there or something. So like, right. you know, I thought, OK, there's something to latch on to here. And then I don't know what the hell starts happening. <laughs> the, I feel the like whole movie, the whole movie is just him harassing women. That's <laughs> absolutely true. And then one woman who fucks him over. So it's who him, fucks him over. And him just like not like like not just harassing, but just straight up murdering. Yeah, no, I mean he he at this this movie he like there's like an attempted rape, there's a lot of assault. He absolutely murders someone by biting her neck. It's like crazy. Well, he's got this like fantasy vampire dominatrix telling him what to do, pretty much. Uh. It's it's we i feel like we are all defeated by this movie yeah <laughs> yeah i don't even know so like yeah so here comes the, he just, just destroys his apartment for no reason <laughs> like there wasn't any rhyme or reason to it he just destroys his apartment <laughs> I got, I got, I got a fun behind the scene fact about this one. So uh, the uh, this was shot in one take. Uh, I mean, it was all real furniture and glass. Uh, he only, I mean, he only had one chance to do this. Um, okay. There were two, two cameras on set for this. One of them broke, so there's just one camera recording this. And the Did director, break it? <laughs> probably. <laughs> the director is shocked that he allowed Cage to perform this stunt because it was really dangerous. Yeah, like you could get a, like stupid thing go wrong. You get a little shard of glass in your eye, and that's a yeah. big pain in the ass. <laughs> but he, Jesus. the way the way he runs around the room while he's he, he looks like Conan O'Brien, like <laughs> like doing something as he, he as he's gallivanting around smashing stuff. It's so, <laughs> oh my gosh, because what set him off to? destroy his apartment like why it's the lady left him a note that said i don't want to see you again the the first lady oh i thought right. it was the mirrors or something well he had been see he, yeah like he couldn't see himself in the mirror and that one guy was like i'm trying to take a dump stop talking in the bathroom and he's he, like he's, go, he goes go back to the ladies room <laughs> Right, like that's where you look. You can only look at yourself in the ladies. Room. Can we talk about when he chases Maria Cucina Alonso into the fucking ladies' room and all the boardroom is like laughing about it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and his laughing in the boardroom, he's just like, <laughs> like, I don't. He, you you can't tell like that 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 fact that this accent he does is supposed to be this 
put upon thing makes me think that anytime he's interacting with all these other people, he's trying to put upon, you know, amp up his whole attitude or whatever. You cannot tell at all. Like, he's just that way the entire movie. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, even I think in the, the note I had found that said it that he takes it down a little bit with a therapist. I don't think he does. I think he's just. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. He's just still crazy in another way. Yeah. Oh God. Um, can we get, I, I'm just like pre like real oh, vampire. Oh, can, we get, <laughs> can we get the <laughs> clip of him where he's yelling at uh, Alva and the, 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 the one with the face. Oh, okay. So yeah, like the one so, with the face. So this you'll, you'll, is the damn, the drama of the, the friggin file contract, contract just builds and he fa- he goes to her. She's she's so terrified of him. She calls in sick. He goes to her house and like sweet talks to her like, "Hey baby, come to work. It's all good. We're gonna get this together." And then they get in the cab together. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." But you're gonna find that fucking file today. <laughs> and then this happens when I don't know. She tries to leave or something. That's fucking crazy. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. And you have to do it. You have to, or I'll fire you. Do you understand? Do you? It's just like... It's... When he starts to go crazier, it's like somebody turns on a vacuum behind his head. Like, I think his hair sort of like goes further back as the... And also, something we didn't... Some, I, I really loved earlier, because you mentioned how he goes crazy after the girl. He, he doesn't show up for a date. Previously, they had gone on a date to a museum, yes. and my, I think it might be my favorite part in the movie. They're walking around the museum, and they come up to like a painting or whatever, and, and she's like, "What do you think of this space?" And he's like, "I gotta go piss," and then he just leaves. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, he wants love on some level. That's- that's right. the, the but, theme of the movie that I think is he, he's just just obsessed with the idea of finding love because that's kind of what he says at the beginning at the end. Yeah. And maybe he f- feels th- I'm probably giving too much credit, but maybe maybe the vampire thing is he feels unlovable. And that's his explanation is why. It, but he's really pushing people away, but he thinks I don't know that I'm trying to apply some logic to this, but I can't. Well, remember, I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, I, I'm starting to think that I'm starting to think that because the two women, they look very similar, like very similar, like hairstyle and everything. And I'm almost starting to think that, yeah, like he's obsessed with her and he completely dreams up this alternate scenario where a woman who looks almost exactly like her is like obsessed with him or something. And it's like, cause then he does run into her at the end. I don't, I don't know. This could all be like the psychology of abuse. Like he could, he doesn't know how to give and receive love unless it's in this bizarre, like dynamic of like, like hit. Then this is why he treats the secretary that way too, is because he like, he doesn't really know how to relate to people in any other way besides right. abusing them. I don't know. Yeah. And the, the woman at the beginning is interesting though, because I do think she's into him. Like the, the very, yeah. like she yeah. to be like down for a normal relationship. And the only reason that she dumps him is because he runs away in the middle of the museum. And he, <laughs> and he, he totally stands her up for no reason. He's like, yeah, Hey, let's get back together. Yeah. Yeah. Just stands her up. Like <laughs> No, no fucking call. Yeah. And that that's how he is with every, I, I guess if the three main women in, in his life are the love interest, Alva, his secretary, and his therapist, he he gaslights all of them by being like, hey, yeah, like, I want to, you know, and then they get there and he treats my shit. <laughs> like, he, I, I don't, we're, we're really delving into some themes here that I don't think the writer. No. <laughs> well, there, there was one moment at the top of the movie that kind of like is making me think of this. Do you remember he just like looks out his office window and there's a couple just standing on the corner and they're smooching each other and the, the guy's trying to hand him sodas and I'm like, why is he staring at this couple? <laughs> they're making up for like 10 seconds and a guy with sodas is just like pushing. <laughs> sodas. Like two blue sodas that are like unregulated. Like what soda was that even? And the can was bizarrely small, like like a 12, yeah. like a, a six ounce can of soda. 
And then also don't forget about the scene in the diner where there's two women talking behind him and he, they, one of them is like, oh, I got engaged. I'm so excited. And he stands up, yells something. We rewound that scene several times, still have no idea what he said. I'm going to Google this. Yeah, but... no clue what the hell he fucking said in that moment. <laughs> he was just like, I'm going to was... die. Yeah, there was a lot of very vague language from him. I... I really, it's probably better than what was written, but I really just a slow descent into obsession and madness, I guess. I I think his performance was heavily influenced by uh, old, old vampire movies. If you see the way he's walking, he's like this all the time with his shoulders up. That's that's, that's kind of the thing. So he sees a clip from Nosferatu, and then he starts acting like that. That's like when he's walking through the club with the vampire teeth on, and yeah, oh. that's that's okay. Yeah. So it's much more heavy handed than I'm thinking. It's pretty heavy handed, yeah. Oh yeah, that was my other. He walks in at the top of the stairs, spreads his arms, and then he walks through the crowd like. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh I... god, this Can movie. We get... oh. Yeah, well, yeah. You want to do uh, one of the... so. Do you want to do the 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 clip that the I'm a vampire clip? So at yeah, this, this point, he's convinced brief. that he's a vampire. This is after the guy tells him to go back to the ladies' room. He yeah. runs into the street. I'm a vampire! Right. I'm a vampire! 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 Running through the streets. Can we just hit it again? <laughs> this is what it was like to live in New York City, though. I will say. <laughs> It wasn't far off from this. I think that's actually footage of Trump leaving the White House. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> hey, yeah. Um, I, you know what would be really fucked up, though? Because this is going to play in, like, I don't know, a few weeks. Oh, God. <laughs> God, God let's not, not talk about that because who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> right. Oh, God. <laughs> um, uh, why don't you give me, Chris, the clip, the next clip where he uh, chases after the pigeon. So he's 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 acquired some vampire teeth at this point, but he didn't. Oh, have I don't a lot know if money. I got that. I don't think I got a t- uh, pigeon one. Uh, I didn't get the pigeon one. OK, no worries. Um, what about the what about the one where he's calling the doctor with the teeth in? Oh, I got that one. This is the moment that oh, Dave yeah. talked about earlier because I got the sexy guy. <laughs> <laughs> this part is great. I'd like to make it sooner. Well, I'm open on Tuesday morning. How's that? Sooner. Uh-huh. Peter, do you have a cold? A cold, yeah. Okay, look, I could squeeze you in on Monday afternoon. Can you make that? Oh, sooner. Peter, is it something very urgent? Very urgent, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I tell you what, uh... <laughs> this absolute... Don Lothario just comes up, like, she puts his, like, her hand on his cheek so sensually. I don't get like like that moment was, I you know hey maybe that, that that's how they got her to do the movie was like hey. I I do want to point out that actress is named Elizabeth Ashley and I don't know if you guys saw Russian Doll she was featured heavily in Russian Doll so she's still working. She's great. Yep, still talks like that. Wonderful voice. <laughs> Unless, because we were just talking about, sorry, we we were just talking about how he obsesses over other couples. Even his therapist has somebody. Yeah. He imagines this, he imagines this therapist has this sexy dude there with her. Oh. Yeah. Shit. When in reality, when in reality, she's sitting there eating ice cream and crying and like picking up the phone when he calls, but he imagines that she's with this sexy Man. Damn, wait, now if we're like thinking about it through the lens of that. But then all the moments that happen with other characters in the movie aren't imagined by him. Like the moments with a- Alba and her family, they don't seem to be imagined by Nick Cage. Guys, is this an incel movie? <sighs> Whoa. The, the thing that the, you know, the counter argument for that, though, is that like he genuinely does have someone who is interested in him, you know? Right. But then he, he, yeah, he treats her like shit because he's so, I, Vampire's Kiss does sound like, like an incel would start a band called Vampire's <laughs> Kiss. <laughs> I, it might be. I think I might be giving this too much psych, like psychology, but I really do think, that, the more I'm thinking about this is 
the vampire's kiss is is abuse and like what happens is like is he is his like what is it his relationships are colored by the fact that he doesn't know how to relate to other people in a healthy way but then when he relates to people they also catch it too because he's abused them and now alva is going to be fucked up for the rest of her life it's so it's like they've caught the vampirism too never mind no and, that's really good i okay. like that i i think that i think that could because well we don't want to give away how it ends yet, I guess. But no, like, we can get away. Whatever, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, because her brother kills him. Right. So it's like now I mean, he has blood on his hands. Like he's changed forever too. Yeah. He's caught the vampire's kiss too. <laughs> yeah. And like what her brother, that? like her brother's like, like really, like it was almost an impulsive decision because Nick Cage was like trying to stab himself, and he's just like, "I'll help you," and that pushes it down. But like it's a yeah. Fun... <laughs> yeah. Can we so we, the... right, so we have a bunch of like a va- bunch of like random vampire scenes, yeah. and then I, I'm just I'm just trying to vaguely remember the plot at this point. We I mean, vampires... he's turned his his couch into a coffin where he can yes. open it up and go. Yes. And he's, he's the... <laughs> yeah, and he's uh like slowly progressed into vampirism where he goes to a store and he sees some fiberglass vampire teeth that look like. What the fuck are those? Like, I don't even oh, know. Yeah. Like, who would put that in their mouth? And then the other, these, like, yeah. cheap-ass ones yeah. for $3. And so we, you know, and buy then some we, cheap plastic teeth. We escalate a little bit because then he, he I don't remember which order this happens in, but he kills he kills a woman in a club by biting her neck. Yeah, uh, This is, like, the very end of the movie. Like, yeah. He, yeah. He's, and then he's, also he assaults Alva pretty, like, you know, she's got a gun. He, like, knocks her out pretty much. We uh, a gun of blanks, yeah. Uh, not real ammunition. Oh, her, yeah, it was a whole scene with her brother. Let's talk about that scene. So, like, this is the scene where you know he's being increasingly, increasingly like intimidating to her, uh, really right. bad, and chasing right. her and shit. And uh, so she's like, she has a gun that her brother gave her, but doesn't have any bullets. So this is where you know he comes, he gets her when she's home, but he, you know she knows something wrong, so she stops, gets some blanks, and they get to the office, and he chases her. Into yeah. the parking garage or like a boiler room, whatever the fuck that is, and like sexually assaults her. But we have a clip, not of that moment, but of the moment <laughs> just after he sexually assaults her, where he tries to shoot himself in the mouth with the blanks. Yes. Oh. Which, by the way, uh, a PSA: if you actually did that, you would actually injure yourself. With yeah. Him. So don't shoot yourself in the mouth with blanks. It doesn't. It it will hurt you. This might be the moment where, he, like, he fully transitions into a vampire because, like, bullets can't kill me or something. But yeah. <laughs> he says boohoo. There is. I can't remember the. I don't think I have the background for this, but there's he something. Says boo-hoo. He says boohoo. He chal- He actually gave himself an explicit challenge, and he was like, "I want to say boohoo in a way that doesn't sound stupid." He did. <laughs> yeah. Why? What the hell is wrong? What is he trying? He's creating Easter eggs in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> boohoo. Boohoo. This is this is all a performance piece where his whole thing is like, "I want to be reviled for now, but then in thirty years, I want everyone to love this movie." <laughs> This really is a, a big turning point for him. I think this is just sort of when he's just like, I can be crazy and movies and I don't know. Sure. Was sure. he in his twenties or how old was he when he did this? It was eighty eight. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing twenties. We should, yeah, we should have his birthday. We got to get the timeline. We got to make. Yeah, the, right? We got to get a timeline up on on the screen and, and just kind of get these laid out in time because yeah, like he at was, what point did he turn crazy? There's a, by the way, Chris, there's a, some sort of marching band going down our street right now. Are you serious? Oh, that's uh, awesome. oh wow. <laughs> Sounds very, very a small marching band. Uh, so he was born in 64, so he was 24 during this movie. He was 24. Wow, that young? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Meg pointed out something. He looks more bald in this movie than he, he does now. Does. Yeah. He does. That's crazy. He does <laughs> I mean, I guess he's just one of those, like, I can, he's always looked like 45 to me. Yeah. Like, that is so odd. 
Do we have any? All right. So do we have any clips, Chris, from the very last scene where he's dragging the stake around? Yes. Remember. Yeah, we do. Okay. So yeah, he let's kills get that-, that clip and then wrap this up because there's just <laughs> I don't even he, know. He goes to the the club. He kills the lady, and he's been wandering the streets all night. Meanwhile, Maria Cucino Alonso gets her brother riled up. He's like, hey, this guy fucked and tried to kill me or assault me or whatever. And he's like, I'm going to kill that guy. So they're waiting for him at his apartment. And uh, this is uh, Nick Cage wandering the streets after murdering a lady. Yes, I do. I was spending a lot of money here. And I just think it's time for a change. Yes, but I'm in real love. You sweep me off my feet. Big L. What? Women. We walked along while bright and red uprose the rising sun. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have cut that so so soon. That was a good one. This, this is actually, I think this is from a montage on YouTube. So th- this is not exactly how it plays out in the other thing. <laughs> yeah. You get the idea. But yeah. so that, this scene is interesting because this is when we, I, I, I kind of like this scene because he really shows you exactly what's going on. He's made all this up and he's having this imaginary conversation with his therapist. Right. Where his therapist is like, there's the perfect woman for you. You're going to be happy. And then he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> That that whole thing was legitimately hilarious. Like he's babbling on the street versus his her his therapist, and he's like, "Hey, so I think I raped and killed people." And she's like, oh, "That's okay, go live your life." It, like <laughs> people switching get between murdered. that and it, switching between that and just insane on the street, like the way he looks. I legitimately the the latter half. Funny. The, yeah, like the latter half of the movie, it tries to be funny, and I honestly think it is. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. I will agree. That part of the mo- movie was like fucking awesome. And then yeah. the part where she's like, yeah, people die every day. And he's like, right. cool, cool. And also, it's like the woman comes out and she's like, I like Vivaldi and weekends in the country. He's like, that's exactly what I like. He hasn't talked about Vivaldi once the entire movie. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, what's it called? The, uh, there's the part we skipped over was when he's in the club he runs into the woman who he fantasizes about yes. as a vampire and for Beals. uh and she's like i don't know you i don't know you who is this guy and she's like you're a vampire and then they they t- they drag him out but for a moment they cut back to jennifer beals and that guy she's with and they look at each other and laugh yeah like what does that mean who's real what is this <laughs> right that's that's exact because yeah, her and that dude Donald, I think his name was, and Donald, like, Donald, yeah, no, yeah. And the second it was they, like they, yeah, they laughed at that. It's just like wait, is that imagined or was like was she faking it before or was he talking to an invisible person? And yeah, I and also I I, I love when you hear random other voices that are supposed to be from extras and like he runs out he's like do you have a gun try and shoot me and people like go home bro (laughs) like these clearly like edited in things (laughs) yeah he's like trying to get people to kill him when he's running home like oh my god that part was nuts he is god i I, honestly i give him nothing but props this whole movie it's fucking bonkers but i it's definitely like really fun it's like a must watch at some point in your life. One if time. You're I agree. Not just Nicholas complete cage completist. I feel like it's yeah. Oh, it's yeah. At the end. He 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 gets he comes back to his apartment. Yes. And you know. He, the brother confronts him and puts a stake through his heart with Nicholas Cage's <laughs> significant assistance. <laughs> yeah, he he has it there, and yeah, like you said, like snap the deci- decision. The brother's just like, oh, I could kill him right now. Okay, boy, and Done. then just. <laughs> but the, the part yeah. that was, the part was interesting about this is before when he comes in, he's got Sharon, like this lady he loves, like the love of his life or whatever. He's immediately right. fighting when they're and abusive to her too. The made up yeah. lady. Yeah, he's yelling, he's yelling at her in his head. He's like. Why is it always like this, Sharon? Like he starts immediately like being an asshole. Wait, Sharon's the made-up person that the therapist introduced him to. Yeah. 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 
like, yeah, he, he's imagining it, and you see him like walk up the stairs to his apartment and walk in. He's already like, oh, everything, you're already on my case. Uh, oh, he's telling me this, and like, yeah, like he's already fighting with his fake soulmates. Yeah. Wow. He's like, did I tell you yeah. I became a vampire for a little while? It's a long story. And he's like, why do you always have to bring up the vampire thing? <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, I didn't expect this. These these heavy themes. I uh, didn't expect this movie to have so much. But it's not just memes, guys. It themes too. Memes, memes and themes. <laughs> Jesus nice. I feel like this is this is probably the shortest plot discussion we've had. Is there's just it's I don't know. Chris, you want to? Th- we'll cover our overall thoughts on the movie in a little bit. But Chris, you want to take us away to the trivia section? Oh yeah. <laughs> now we finally have our little uh, our voice clips added. Thank uh, you, Will Janetta, for those uh, you, voice titles. Uh, I covered a lot. There's so much behind the scenes stuff in this. This is a rare movie where Nicolas Cage actually recorded um, a commentary track. Uh, so there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. But this movie is Nicolas Cage's favorite movie he's ever made. I swear <laughs> to God. He said it in 2018, too. So it's not like early on he's uh, <laughs> i think it was just a big turning point for him oh i didn't mention it earlier so he made only forty thousand dollars for this movie um he took like a re- even even for the time that was really low for him and he took a reduced thing this is post really moonstruck want- right yes yeah so he right. was kind of a big star at that point and he used it to buy his first sports car which Good for him <laughs> Which later in life he became a major sports car collector, so that makes sense. Um, huh. I don't know if either of you guys picked up on this, but this movie has a lot of similarities to American Psycho. That's yep. because uh, Christian Bale used Nicolas Cage's performance as a inspiration for Patrick Bateman. What? Yeah. Wow. That what? Is big props. Big props. That makes a lot of sense now. It really oh, it has does. a similar vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Um, they, at some point he's humming to himself, uh, in the morning in one of the scenes. And that was improvised because he, he hummed a a Stravinsky song. Uh, Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. And he thought that it would be okay because it's so old, but the Stravinsky estate still had copyright. So, uh, they didn't realize it in time. And so it cost the director (laughs) $10,000. Wow. 50,000, but they took it out of his paycheck. Uh, oh my God. It sounded like complete jarble. Like he was making up. It, it, it was seriously him like making eggs or whatever and going like boom, 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 ba, 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 boom, boom, ba. Uh, like I, I, thought, I thought he was just making noises. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe um, you have to pay copyright for someone humming a fucking song poorly. <laughs> But Stravinsky, it's not like a reason, like it's like a classical. I mean, at that point, is it protected under parody? I, I don't know. I, 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 I think it just, it was. <laughs> Those Stravinsky's are sticklers, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Don't fuck with Stravinsky. Yeah. Uh, all right. Some other stuff. Uh, there's a lot of, mov- a lot that was cut out of this movie and, uh, Cage suggested that those lost scenes represented some of his best work and he longs for those scenes to be res- restored someday. Oh Me my too. god. We all do. We all do. Yeah. That wow. will be a special episode if those come uh, out. The lost um, page scenes. Kissed. <laughs> kissed. The scene where he catches a pigeon, this is my favorite fact, uh, where he catches the pigeon and eats it. I don't think we even talked about that. But um, <laughs> he, he was pigeon. really excited because he caught the pigeon and in the director's commentary, the director's like, yeah, we drugged the pigeon. Like <laughs> you thought you were an actor because you could catch a pigeon. Is that what you thought? <laughs> also, he really ate the fucking pigeon, which was insane. yeah, yeah that too. That's not true. <laughs> but he probably would have if they let him. Yeah. He, yeah, he was too far gone at that point. He absolutely would have. <laughs> uh, here are some other actors who were considered for this role, aside from Nicolas Cage, Judd Nelson. Okay. Uh, who is that? Yeah, that's the guy from Breakfast the Breakfast Club. Club. Sylvester Stallone. Oh my God. John uh, Travolta. Oh. Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
Travolta foreshadowing. Wow. Can you imagine Stallone running down the street yelling, I'm a vampire? <laughs> or Schwarzenegger, even. I don't know what. I can't what imagine Sch- any of I'm them. a vampire. <laughs> Maybe wow. John Travolta. Travolta could have done it. Maybe Travol- John Travolta. Travolta, I, that's a pretty one for one replacement for me. I think Travolta could have been bonkers in that, too. Yeah. I mean, Travolta replacing Nick Cage, that's just a gimme. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Uh, oh god there's so many i'll try to skip so quick uh the scenes where he's dragging the stake around talking uh yelling himself that was shot with a very long lens and uh, everyone walking by him is actual people oh my god <laughs> wow that's amazing that must this must be one of the first movies to employ the jackass tactic of filmmaking yeah. <laughs> or the yeah because he he is accosting random pedestrians and being like kill me kill me and like i like I remember, like seeing like a couple, and the guy legitimately looked really scared. I was like, "That's great es- extra work." <laughs> but you could tell they're not like super phased because it's New York City, and they see that shit right. all the time. So they're like, "Walk around, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, covered in blood." They're like, "Don't worry, wow. don't call any cops. Just keep going." <laughs> right. Uh, oh, this last one. I this is from an interview. Um, I so basically, he hated Jennifer Beals. Nicholas Cage hated Jennifer Beals. He didn't think she provided proper motivation creatively and sexually. He really wanted his girlfriend, Patricia Arquette, to play the vampire, but the director was like, no. Um, He was very cold to her during filming, and they just were like, oh, he's he's in character. And then this is the one that this is from an actual interview. to get turned on, Nicolas Cage asked to have hot yogurt poured over his toes while he was doing a love scene with Jennifer. Nobody could comprehend why yogurt got Cage roused, but the crew obliged. If you look at the shot, you can't see his feet. That's the least weird part of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps I'm getting yogurt. crazier and Nick crazier. Cage yogurt feet. That's just fucking insane. <laughs> I didn't hear words. I don't this is know. Only one person who said this, but but like we're getting deeper and deeper here, and the further we go, the stranger and stranger it gets. With if, Kate. if it was just one person, I can I can imagine. Yeah, like maybe people are just making stuff up about what happened on set, and she's like, "Oh, vampires kiss." Yeah, it's got to be true. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. Uh, that's that's it. There's Old so much. Cagey boy, at it again. Nice. Chris, let's Are we gonna go rank, to the data. Rank the gauge. Let's rank the gauge. Rank the cage. <laughs> They're so silly. I love this. All right, we're and gonna this rank clip, the gauge. this 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 image right here is actually our normal image for this for the this segment. part of the movie. This part of this podcast. This is not something we added specifically for it. So amazing. What we're going to do is we're going to score this movie and we're going to see where it ranks against other movies. Since we're pre-recording this episode, we will not see where it ranks today, but we will at our next live episode, December 13th. So here's how this works, David. We rank it on a scale of one to 10. We'll let you start and uh, we'll explain to you what each of these categories are. The first one is cast, which is how good is the cast in the movie? Not acting specifically, but just like how many people are you just like, oh, that guy. Love this guy. Love when so-and-so is in a movie it's a tricky one but yeah i (laughs) let's go with an eight because i love nick cage and every extra in this movie is hilarious (laughs) (laughs) oh wow all right i'm going with a two on this one (laughs) because i was like actually i'll give it a three because i actually did like maria cachito alonzo's performance but everybody else I'm like, I mean, you know, actually, no, it's going up to a five because this was a very diverse cast for a movie of that time. Yeah. It was mostly people of color. And, and he, you know, it wasn't just like swarmed with white people. So five. Um, I'm going to give it a four. four. It actually, you know, I'll give it a five. It's a five. A five. All right. Okay. Uh, we didn't talk about the David Hyde Pierce cameo. Oh, yeah. Uh, he when? Did- in a in a in a bar scene you can see him chris is like that's i caught it with my eagle eye he was just sitting at a bar (laughs) and it really wasn't 
Damn. David I fears just sitting at a bar. Should I try and find the screenshot? No, don't worry about it. It's just I'll look it up. I'll look there's it up. so much in this movie to find. Oh my this, all right. We got this next one is acting, and this is not just Nicolas Cage's acting, just everyone's acting. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm ooh, I'm gonna go with a six. Obviously, because Nick Cage and Alba I thought were great. I thought the therapist was I don't know what she was doing. And I I think the bat really turned in a great performance, but with everything else, uh let's go with six. I I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go five. I, I'm about the same place as you are with that. Yeah. I'm gonna go four. It's fine. <laughs> All right, fun. How fun was this movie to watch out of 10? 10. Absolute 10. This this is absolutely like up like room birdemics like that kind of thing. Like this this is in the rotation for come on over we're watching Vampire's Kiss for sure. Yeah, it's it's I think I never found myself wondering I did find myself wondering how much was left but not because I was bored. It was more because like where is this going to go? Like they only have so much time. So I'm right. I'm going to say eight. It's not like face-off level fun for me, but it was fun. Mm. Uh, I'm going to say eight too, just taking... Actually, I'm going to do seven. I'm taking off a couple of points because all the violence against women is yeah. a little bit like... If you think too much about it, it's a little bit... <laughs> it takes the fun away. True. No, uh, I feel bad about my 10. No, don't I'm feel keeping... bad. Your, no, your no, score no, no. is perfect. Don't feel your bad about your 10. Absolutely not. Uh, all right, and then technical. This is sort of just like anything you'd win a technical Oscar for. Like, how are the special effects? How's the hair and makeup? How's all that stuff? How's the oh, that, that stuff? that's a that's a big fat zero. <laughs> that is absolutely a zero. I can't. I I cannot sleep at night if I gave him more than a zero. <laughs> wow, the first zero in the history of the show. This is episode <laughs> ten. Not a zero given that I know of. So, all right, I'm gonna give it a two because the bat. Mm. The bat was a technical achievement in and of itself. But yeah, um, the blood was like the blood was like watered down ketchup, the like, you know. And there was actually no special effects. They really destroyed an apartment. There was <laughs> Yeah. That wasn't a practical effect. That was just the hey, we're gonna record yeah. you destroying an apartment. I'm gonna Some guy it- went to a bodega and left his keys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the uh, PA's apartment. It- Sorry. Uh- I'll give it a one. Wow. This is actually, I'll give, actually, I'm changing it. I'm changing it to a three. three. You know, like it wasn't poorly filmed. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Just, yeah. All right. Overall, yeah. it is what it sounds like. Oh, God. Uh, it's funny because I have a zero for technical, but everything else. I want to I want to give it a, hmm, the number in my head. I want to give it a nine. I want to give it a nine. <laughs> nice. It's, it's so I will. I think this movie is edited absolutely hilariously like, <laughs> there's, there's something i can really appreciate because i think what i loved about that museum like i have to piss is like he like, she's like what do you think of this piece i have to piss immediate cutaway like that's that's the funniest part to me i i, I don't know little things like that and also yeah it, it's it's so funny this movie would have been better served with a better composer that would have played up the comedy a little more i think like mm. cut to he walks out the thing like duh, 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 duh. like I don't know some <laughs> stupid music like I don't know yeah um I'm gonna go with a uh, six ah uh, seven seven because yeah. of the, the craziness but it wasn't like I wasn't like okay I could it wasn't Mandy is my new favorite of the Nick Cage films and I you know I love crazy mm-hmm. Nick Cage but you know I'm gonna give it a six six woof. This one's scoring right. pretty low. All right, bonus la- points. La- yeah, so this basically is you can give or take away a point for anything. You could be like, oh, I'm taking away a point because I saw a, um, what's it called? A pasty. <laughs> if there was a pasty error in this. Or you can add a point for something you liked in the movie. I'm giving I'm giving an extra point for the infinite, the, the mileage I'm going to get out of sharing that I'm a vampire clip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving it a point for it. <laughs> I'm going to give it a point. Uh, there's so much stuff. I just, I'm just going to give it a point just because of the fact that it's no longer a film and it is now like 
you know, it, it transcended to, to something else. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to give it a point for just, uh, let me think of something specific. Uh, just him turning the couch into a coffin. That was yeah, a really funny was visual really cool. kick. <laughs> like The way he scurried underneath it too, the legs kicking and everything. Oh my God. <laughs> All oh, right, so man. we got 88 points for this movie. I think that's going to get us relatively high. Yeah, but, it's, you yeah. Know, it's up there Probably now. not going to be our highest. Um, so I'm we'll thinking find like out, four or five. Yeah, out of what will be 10. 10 at that point. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Middle of the pack. So we can't see what? the results now, but we can go to the cage gauge. The cage gauge. All right, so the cage gauge is a, four, a two-axis quadrant plot that plots cage craziness versus cage acting ability. So for this movie, what would you give Cage in terms of when I say Cage craziness, I mean that quintessential Cage brand crazy. I don't mean he's acting like a crazy person, like his his job, uh-huh. his character is crazy. I mean like, like when he puts that Cage spin that makes it a little crazier. Yeah. That level. So out of ten, what would you give this movie? Big fucking ten, because yeah. this is also he tapping into the the craziness and also. This is like this. This was like a turning point for him. We were talking about only twenty four. This is he still has that freshman enthusiasm and energy about being crazy. So he's trying and he's unlocking the potential. Absolutely a ten. I'm right there with you. This is the, the yep. peak. Yeah, this is, sign me up too. I can't think of yeah. any. And, and I've been told as <laughs> much. Time. We've been told as much by other people that this is the peak of cage craziness. And mm. he's he's got he's probably like, I bet you he was a real annoying student in acting school. Like oh yeah oh my god like he's got that like written all over him probably like standing up on lunch tables reciting like Shakespeare shit and like God knows what <laughs> okay acting ability what would you say is him acting ability for him specifically in this in this film oh goodness I you know because like the therapist I, I I cannot get over the accent and like. And learning that he was doing the accent on purpose to do something makes me understand it less. <laughs> like, I, I want to give him a three, a three. It, it wasn't like, I wasn't, it wasn't, again, like Tommy was so like this, what is he doing? But it was very much like, I I don't know. It, it, three, three is the number. Yeah. I think you captured it when you said he's got like that freshman enthusiasm. So it's almost mm. like a shotgun, like he's just throwing a bunch of acting shit out there and, and just whatever happens kind of thing. So I'm yeah. I'm I'm right there with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a, a three also. I'm gonna give it a little higher a five just because he's fucking trying, you know? He he's is. really putting all his shit into it. He's not <laughs> leaving anything out there. So let's just yeah. see where that puts us on the cage gauge. So yeah, solidly in that bottom right quadrant. That's the this is this is officially the cra- the craziest movie, the most cage crazy movie we've seen. And uh and we'll we'll put it out there with the rest of the films at the next live episode, but I know it's in the quadrant with uh the Wicker Man in the poor acting but crazy cage quadrant. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so happy that this is the craziest. <laughs> <That was laughs> I think the, it is. That yeah. was a pretty fucking crazy movie. A perfect tent yeah. from all three people. Oh my oh god. My all god. right. Let's do Next section, Chris. Just a little. Oh, should I talk over it? Sorry. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> cage facts is what it said. Uh, cage. <laughs> this is Get where we cage. find a little bit about the about Nicholas Cage. And today's cage fact is brought to you by our 105th movie, because we've been saying 104 for so long, and I realized that I had missed one which is a recent one that hasn't come out yet. It's called The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. I'm really excited for this one. It uh, co-stars Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Um, this is the plot summary. I want to read this to you guys. Nicholas Cage, the actual Nicholas Cage, played by Nicholas Cage, begrudgingly accepts a $1 million offer to attend the birthday of a Mexican billionaire super fan. When things take a wild turn, Nick is forced to become a version of some of his most iconic and beloved characters in order to extricate his wife and daughter from the fan who is a notorious drug lord. That sounds incredible. I'm so excited for this. This is like that sounds fantastic. This is a movie we should wait till after we've seen every other movie to watch. Yes. Because then we'll know everything. Yep. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so glad he's going meta, like like sort of embracing his. This is this is wild. And all when right. we cut together the super cut of all the films, we can use yes. that film as a wild card because he'll have multiple roles. Do we have any parallels in this movie, uh, Chris, from to other other movies? Yeah, uh, Matchstick Men. Just seeing a therapist. True. Uh, let me think hard now. I think I threw a bunch on the list. Yeah, literary agent is kind of similar. He's an agent in um, yeah, Leaving Las Vegas. I don't know. It's a little stretched. Yeah. Um, Definitely what, the fancy, the fancy mental cage. illness for sure. What did you say, Chris? I interrupted the you. fancy cage accent. Fancy cage accent. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> Guys, any final thoughts on our this movie before we close it out? This is the first movie I've watched in a long time where my first thought after was, this is not the last time I'll watch this. <laughs> so that that is high praise. Yeah, I I've, think, yeah, this is, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I think this is definitely going to stick with me for a long, long time. Mm. I feel, yeah, I feel almost defeated by this movie. Like, I just don't even know how to tackle it. It's, it's got its own thing i don't know but i'm glad we finally watched it all right uh david where what would you like to plug what where can the the people find you (laughs) oh they could find me uh twitter and instagram at other dave thomas um and obviously with the pandemic i'm not doing a whole lot of stand-up but you could follow at 2m well 2mb studios on twitch that's 2mb studios i do I put together a wrestling show featuring a bunch of Boston comedians merged. They cut promos. We merged with video game footage. It's a full length wrestling show. It's Thursdays at eight. Fridays at six thirty. Eight Eastern. Thursdays eight Eastern time. Um, Fridays at six thirty p.m. Eastern. Uh, level down. I play some games with two friends of mine. And Fridays at ten thirty p.m. Eastern. I co-host a weekly show with Boston stand-up Tookie Kavanaugh called The Rehash, where she. Sort of like this. She makes me watch a horrible movie every week. <laughs> and we talk about it and we have on super funny guests. Um, but yeah, that's all on 2MB Studios on Twitch. Man, you're doing a lot of that's shit. Awesome. Trying to, it's keeping me sane. Wow. That, like, that is your, that's amazing. That's a lot of work. That's awesome. So 2MB Studios, <laughs> QAW is really fun. I have a character on there. It's really fun. One of the best, one of the best roster members, if you ask me. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, so I guess that's the show. Yeah, let me. I, I, I'm gonna just say our next episode, so we don't have to record that. You know what I mean? So our next episode will be December 13th, recorded live on Twitch. We're gonna be watching Raising Arizona with Oscar-winning writer of Black Klansman, David Rabinowitz. Um, you can catch that on a podcast uh, the Tuesday following. All so, right. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. It's been a wild one. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good one. All right. Bye, everybody.